What's going on, guys? It's Bryce again. Welcome to another episode of the Expedition to Try podcast, where I have no idea what I'm doing with my life, and I'm assuming a lot of you don't either, so we're going to try and figure it out together. If you're new to this podcast, it's my goal to introduce you to rad new artists, musicians, entrepreneurs, and overall just creative, passionate people who deserve way more recognition than they currently have. So today, super stoked to introduce you to a member of the band Northvale, who I came across on TikTok. Go figure. Everything's on TikTok now. But Keith, thank you so much for joining me on today's episode. For sure, dude. Happy to be here. <laughs> so do you want to just do a quick introduction to who you are, like age, uh, what you do in the band, and like that general stuff before we get into the music? For sure, man. So my name's Keith. I am the lead singer of Northvale. I'm 25. And we are, I don't know, we're essentially a COVID band, I guess. That's what, that's what we thats what we say to people these days. We are a COVID band. That's how it started. Awesome. So <laughs> before we get into specifically the band, let's, let's talk a little bit more about your musical journey. So where did music start for you? What is like the farthest back you can remember? I think, I guess the first time I sat down and said to myself, like, oh, I, I like music, I had to have been, I don't know, maybe eight, you know, or, or nine. And it was, my dad always was into music, but uh, he was always into like oldies, like doo-wop, things like that. I heard a lot of Motown growing up. Uh, my mom was like a hardcore Whitney Houston fan. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I used to get into it. I used to just like, I really, really dug music. It made me feel better, <laughs> <Is that, laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> and um, I, yeah, from there it grew. Uh, I definitely grew up heavily influenced by hip hop and R&B uh, before anything else. Once I started really like going out on my own and trying to, you know, find new music. And, um, uh, I, you know, I still have a huge R and B influence. I think I don't, I don't really ever talk about that, but, <laughs> but I for sure do. I, I didn't start getting into, into the rock scene until maybe I, I guess in, in, when I was in middle school, I think, you know, I and I, I got my first guitar and that was, and that was it for me, but I always bounced back and forth. But, you know, coming up, at, I guess at that time, at, at that age, when I started going back and looking at bands, like I was looking at Blink-182, you know, I was into Green Day, <laughs> yeah. uh, things like that. So <laughs> it's just been, a, it's been a crazy ride, I guess, to, to see where I, like where it's, I never even, I, I don't think I've thought about that in a long time, <laughs> where it started and where it's gone. That's, that's <laughs> kind of funny. <laughs> that's interesting. So do you recall, like, that transition like was there one song you heard that was like oh maybe i should explore this kind of rock and roll punk you know rock what? Kind of genre. <laughs> you're gonna laugh i think it was limp biscuit it... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> i think i heard a limp biscuit song i don't know who showed it to me definitely someone crazy <laughs> and i uh yeah no I, I started getting into that i started listening to i was into some 41 for a while mm -hmm. uh those were, I think, the first song I learned how to play on guitar was a Linkin Park song, I think. Oh, cool. I think it was, like, In the End, something super easy. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, it grew from there. Eventually, like, I was all about, uh, I was a big Yellow Card fan. Um, mm -hmm. All the, like, all this whole new wave of pop punk, this ever-evolving pop punk wheel, right? It got yeah. caught up, I got caught up in that. Uh, I don't know. But <laughs> Naughty stuff. You're sending me on a journey in my mind. But <laughs> That's I'm, the goal, I'm, dude. We I'm go flying. through the whole progression of like Yeah, this is pretty crazy. <laughs> so, I'll never forget though, my first guitar. I had a little I had a little Fender Squire, a red one. My dad got I thought I was like I was famous instantly at that point. <laughs> I was like I would stand in front of the mirror and just play. <laughs> <laughs> did you take lessons for guitar or did you try oh, yeah. to learn from yourself? Yeah, when he got me that there was a there was a little shop in my hometown, Saddlebrook, New Jersey. Uh, it's called Joe's Guitar Shop, and he's still there. I think I'm almost positive. Uh, he he was the coolest teacher. It's for someone so young and 
I used to get frustrated quick, but he was so patient. You know, I was, I'm still, still, I'm not, I'm not a sick guitarist, you know, I'm I, by no means. Am I, I don't play in, I don't play guitar in this band. Um, so, but he was such a good teacher. Joe's guitar shop. He didn't sell anything. I'll never forget. He only did repairs and lessons. He was, he would have, he used to have like, I want to say like 50 guitars at a time on a wall. Right. Oh, wow. And they're all just repairs. And like, I could, rec- I don't think I've ever had a lesson there where someone didn't come in and say, how much is this? And he'd be like, Oh, it's just repairs, man. But <laughs> See, that would be awesome. I wish the podcast had like way more listeners. Cause then like in swarms, people would just go to this guitar shop. Like yeah, that would be, be great. amazing. <laughs> I, Joe, man, he's the coolest. I, I should, I should contact that guy and say, what's up? <laughs> so were you always into singing or is that a newer thing how did that come about? um yeah I mean I think the first band I was ever in I played guitar mm-hmm. and it sounds it's gonna sound so conceited but I would always I would always think to myself like that dude can't sing I could sing <laughs> better than that but I was always way too scared to ever try you know um and once I did start singing, I was a little older. I did I did my fair share of hip hop stuff, like rap stuff. I think it started with that. That was always less um it was less emba- embarrassing almost. You know, when you sing, you're really vulnerable, I feel like as a yeah. as a person. You know, it's like it's re- you're really letting it out. So um the fir- I remember the first time I really tried singing, I was like, wow, I I, I suck pretty bad. You know, <laughs> you know, you know, you could I'm not I could hear it. I'm like, wow, this is not easy. So I took a few uh vocal lessons and I mean even to this day, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you I'm an incredible singer. I, I think I got a I think I got a solid voice, but you know, I it's a it's definitely a learned skill, I I believe. Anyway, I think that I always if I had to value something about my artistry, I think it's my showmanship. You know, I, I it, that's what, COVID when it hit, it was really heavy for me. I think it, I, as it must've been for every single artist on the planet, you know, like performing is almost like the entire reason behind doing this for me. And for a lot, I know for a lot of guys that I work with and it's almost like everything else about it especially when you start like moving up the ranks here you know like we're we're starting to be noticed with bands that people are really into now and uh you can see how much more um cutthroat it gets like how much the skill level it it, it almost turns into more work than play you know like i love writing songs and i love recording in the studio but then you get to this level and it's almost like wow I don't want to do this right now. You know what I mean? You're talking like a 12 hour vocal day. Like I didn't eat lunch yet. And we're just still ripping on the same verse. Like <laughs> like Keith, you say this word so weird. You sound like you're from New Jersey so bad. Like, you know, change the inflection, my guy. And I'll just be like, they're like, Oh no. But that it's like, you know, that, that 30 minute set you get, you know, it's like, it makes up for all of it. It's like, everything is clear. When you step on that stage. Uh, do you feel like uh, being like in the punk rock kind of genre, it's more lenient in terms of fucking up while you're playing and like, or singing? Cause my friend is in a punk rock esque band and he's like, one of the best parts about it is no one really gives a shit. We fuck up all the time. No one really notices except for us. And we're just having a good time. Do you feel that way when you guys are performing? You know, I think that for in some in some worlds of punk rock, that is for sure part of the allure of it. Mm-hmm. It's part of the charm, I think. Before this band, I was in another band called Casual Friday, and we were definitely more of that old school vibe. You know, I used to take the stage in my jean vest and uh, <laughs> and like you know tear it up, beer in hand. And all like this band is not really that, you know, I think that it's a little, that whole punk world exists, but now there's like a really new punk scene out here now. And it's a very different world. So I think that like for our, with our shows, like we, I think our last show 
me try to think of a of a fuck up that definitely happens. <laughs> they will happen. I think, yeah. it's, I think it's about I think it's about not reacting to the fuck up. You know, like you don't <laughs> want what. Oh, I'll tell you what happened. So we're playing, and now, especially like on a bigger stage, you got to use monitors, right? Yeah. Like in your monitors, it's not just all floor monitors. So um, I don't know what happened in my ears, but I lost the the track. Like I lost the click, mm. and I didn't know what to do because I have, you know, and like I couldn't hear the drums, I couldn't hear the kick or the snare. So I was like, well. This fucking sucks ass. So like I'm singing, I'm like, I got to figure out what to do. And the first thing I thought of was like, I'm going to stare directly at Chris, Chris my rhythm guitarist. I'm going to yeah. stare directly at his wrist because he is a fucking robot. And I know he keeps perfect time. And it's, I don't know how, but I just stared. It, that was my click. <laughs> And I just, I must have looked crazy on stage. And he, I, he was probably thinking to himself, like, what the fuck is Keith doing? But I was just like, I'm like singing like this, like looking at his string. And then eventually I found, I found it. But so, so, I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if, if it's for us anyway, I don't know if fucking up is, is that, uh, is, is that great? You know, it's not something you want to do. But also, I think that in any show, you want to just, you got to roll with the punches. You know what I mean? You can't ever be like, oh my God, like, stop. We fucked up. Like, you got to just right. plow straight through because you don't want, that's, you know, when have you ever been to a legit show where they stopped the music? That yeah. doesn't work that way. So I don't know. <laughs> but that's funny. Like, I, I could, your, your friend saying like, we fuck up all the time and it's fun. I mean, like, I get, I get that. I know that <laughs> scene. That's like a good, that's a great world. Yeah. It is. <laughs> um. So, as you are starting to kind of pick up the pace with Northvale, are you excited for how fast you're growing or are you kind of nervous? Cause it sounds like there, there are those like long days and long sessions trying to record stuff. Is that nerve wracking for you or are you just overall excited and you're like, we'll figure this out as we go along. I mean, it's a little bit of both. It's, it's super exciting. Like for me to be able to, I, I don't know to see it grow from what it was. I, it was it it all happened so quickly, and I think it, like it's it's weird for me to pick up my phone and like look on my Spotify artist thing and just like at any given time there's people listening, you know. Like I think, and it's not a lot, you know, like ten twenty people, like things like that. But like just seeing that number, there's like twenty humans in the world right now that are streaming my song. Yeah. And it's like seven o'clock and I'm at the gym, like on the elliptical. <laughs> like who, are, who is up? I'm not listening to North Vale at 7 a.m. Like what? You know what it's I mean? all me. It's all me at the it's gym. Right. <laughs> my, you got 20 computers. I'm at least one, dude. I'm at least one. <laughs> but, but we're, uh, I'm definitely stoked, super excited about the whole thing. It's, it's really cool, especially to like start meeting these guys, you know, that like I just idolized like months ago and like we just in um broadside is on tour with um this wildlife right Ooh, now and sick. they were at the gramercy on tuesday and uh, this past week and me and mike went down we just went to the, we just drove into the city to go say what's up yeah and like <laughs> Some like to me that still sounds insane. I went to the broadside show to say what's up to Ollie. Yeah, that's crazy. Fucking like I nuts. went and that and that happened. Like that happened. Like we went downstairs by the merch after their set, and it was like, "What's up, guys? Oh, what's up? What's up? What are you doing? Oh, we came to see the show. Oh, dude, that's sick. You know." And it's just like I'm still fucking like not <laughs> taking it in. I think Mike's a lot better at it. Uh, but for me, I still get a little whacked out. Like, I don't know what to fucking say. Like, that's insane. <laughs> you know, it's a little yeah. weird. I don't mean to fangirl out, as, but it's like, it's just crazy. I would do the exact same thing. Like, yeah. actually, while we're on this subject, I got to ask, because in her own words, one of my top favorite bands, and you did a song with Joey Fleming. Yeah, that was our how, first single. How was that? <laughs> like, Dude, how cool was Joey's, that? Joey's cool as fuck, man. <laughs> Super cool. That was... The, how did that happen? We we wrote the single mm -hmm. and we said this 
like we were like this bridge like, joey would sound cool as hell on this bridge and we didn't know him at all yeah. and we we didn't know anybody we were just starting and I, you know I, mike was like let's just fucking contact the guy like let's just hit him up and be like hey want to do this and um joey just goes yeah like we sent him the track and he's like yeah i'll i'll sing on it and we were like okay <laughs> and he was uh he it happened so quick because he was in new york um he i don't know if he was on i don't know if he was touring it wasn't a uh in her own words tour but yeah. he was in new york for something i don't know if he was doing like an acoustic thing um but he the morning after that show he told us he'd come meet us at mike's job my uh my guitarist is a mastering engineer at sony okay. and he so we just met him over there at sony and went upstairs and just like recorded the the bridge and it was so funny how it happened because like the dude has like one of the sickest voices mm -hmm. for real like i you you hear a lot of people sing and you know it's all, studio magic is such a it's such a huge thing, you know, like sometimes when I like I'll be in the studio and like they'll be like, what are you doing? Like, stop. I'll be like, it sounds perfect. I'll be like, yeah, just but you got to scream more. And I'll be like, what the, what the fuck? Like, I'll just scream into the microphone and all of a sudden magically it sounds beautiful. I'll be like, OK, whatever. I don't fucking get it. But with Joey, with Joey, like you could see he was visibly tired. I don't know. He was probably hung over. Like, I mean, I would be, you know, so like, but yeah. it was it was early. Dude, this dude just came in. N nothing hung out for like 10 minutes and talked dude just fucking rips it into the mic <laughs> just rips it perfect it's just perfect i just looked at mike i'm like D do we even record it again <laughs> i think he did it two times like for fun and then he's like you guys want any extra things and we're just like i i, I don't think so man i think you just fucking <laughs> nailed it exactly what you it's like all right cool and that was it incredible <laughs> nuts <laughs> that's that's the one band on my bucket list right now before that it was neck deep neck deep's my all-time favorite Dude, great and band. now it's i seen them it was incredible now last one i want to see is in her own words that's Dude. it <laughs> they were, we saw them mike the i remember like the the week we decided to start this band mike and i went to a little bar in brooklyn and who was on the bill? It was a crazy bill. Um, it was in her own words. We, we're talking like a tiny place here. Like, yeah. you know, maybe max 50 people. Like, you know. <laughs> and uh, it was so small that there was no green room. Dude, these guys were drinking at the same bar as everyone in the <laughs> building. Like, it was like that type of show, you know? Yeah. It was in her own words. Um, Sleep on it was, oh was there. Um, who else? Oh my god, what a what a tour. Oh, like Pacific. Holy shit. Yeah, you're talking about like crazy dudes and uh and it wasn't who was it? Oh god. Home. It wasn't the home team. We just saw them. It was Home Safe. Home Safe. Oh my god. Yeah. Sick oh sick lineup. And we just like but at the time, I guess this was like this must have been like right before every single one of them popped off like hard and it was just some little spot in Brooklyn. I think they were just like on a, like a van tour, you know, straight up, just driving in a van, like all of them. And Jesus. that's it was sick. It was a great show, like a I, great show. I can't and imagine I it not being, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just seeing them, I was I was hyped. Me, and my, <laughs> I, man, that was like the start. So, how did Northvale come to be? How did you all meet each other? Did you know each other before? How's what's that story? Mike and I. Um, knew each other when we were like real little uh he went to the same grade school as i did and then um he eventually went you know to a different high school and i didn't we just lost touch no reason in particular you know you just grow apart but we were we were friends when we were you know little and then um casual friday my old band was playing a show at the bowery electric in new york and mike was at work in sony like a couple blocks away and he must have saw something on facebook or you know and he uh he just decided to show up he's he was just like oh, i haven't seen that kid in mad long let me go say hi 
So he came by and I saw him and I was like, holy shit, I haven't talked to this kid in years. And I just had a couple drinks with him and we started talking. And um, at the time, Casual Friday was talking about pulling me off guitar. And because I played guitar in that band, but we were talking about pulling me off guitar and bringing another guitarist in because it, it it's just it does so much for the show. If I'm free up, right, I can move around. I can do whatever I want. So Mike started playing rhythm for us on shows just you know for for whatever it was just fun for him to come out and play uh and that band ended and i when that band ended mike was the first person i went to i'm like dude let's start a band he was like no 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 over (laughs) and over again and uh i don't know what changed but one day he's just like yo let's do it and i'm like (laughs) all right and uh, so so he brought in aaron our drummer um we had another uh another guitarist before chris uh the guy's name was joe joe didn't work out but we met chris through joe and kevin i met at starland ballroom um he's our kevin our bassist he uh i was at the bar talking about how i didn't have a bassist in my band so we were at, it was, the, there's a VFW across the street from Starland Ballroom in Sayreville, New Jersey. It's like a spot around here. And um, everyone goes and drinks at the VFW before the show. It's like directly across the street. <laughs> you park at the VFW, you drink at the VFW. That's, that's just the, the culture, right? And we go across the street and Kevin just happened to be like sitting two seats down from me. He's like, Hey, I play bass. And I'm like, get the fuck out of here. He's like, yeah. I'm like, we started talking. Turns out he was there to take pictures for the show for Silverstein. Oh. And, uh, mm-hmm. and he was like, so we kept in touch. He actually hooked up the a the feature with AJ Perdomo, um, from the dangerous summer. He's on our one single high tide. Mm-hmm. And so that was a Kevin connection. Uh, and then eventually Kevin just was just in the band. I don't know. That's how, that's how it happens. You know, <laughs> crazy God. Yeah. You see some rad ass bands. Jesus. I'm getting so jealous. Uh, <laughs> so what do you think has been like, or let's do what's been the process since like first kind of starting the band and getting mm-hmm. to where you are now? Cause you are growing quite rapidly. It seems so like, yeah. what have you been doing to, grow so well i guess i mean like it's not it's definitely not a secret like if you look at our um we we did that song with joey Mm -hmm. just because and then we saw what it did and of course it helped right to do a song with joey fleming and then we were like let's do it again so we called aj and we did a song with aj perdomo and that one was hot you know that one really popped and I think that just immediately catapulted us, you know, from the start. So it just gave us a little bit of momentum and we just really tried to stay on top of it with our social media, you know, as much as we can. We do need, we do need to continue our TikTok journey for sure. Cause we're, we still haven't cracked the code on that hundred percent, you know? Um, but we try with the Instagram and, uh, the other social media accounts for sure. Yeah. And I think that just staying on top of everything, you know, as much as we can trying to stay relevant and, uh, you know, continuing to work with as many people as we can. It really, uh, it, it really just helps the, the progress. You got to roll with the punches. It's like a new world, right? It's not, uh, it's not, let's get some friends together, write a couple songs and like, go play a show down the street at the local bar because realistically nobody's coming to see you over there. You know? Yeah. It sucks. You want to go out and you want to find new music, especially new pop punk music. You're not going to go to the bar or the local (laughs) club. It's just, you're not gonna, you're not even going to turn the radio on, man. (laughs) That's not it. You're going to go on Spotify and you're going to look for the playlists that say new pop punk and you got to figure out how to get yourself there. So it's it, this whole band, I mean, as much as it's fun and we love it and, the, you know, the creativity, it's like the the love for the music, the passion for the music, it's all there. But the plan is a mathematical plan for sure. Like we really, it's, 
it's like it sucks to say, but we really do sit here at this table, right? Where are we? This table right here. We sit, we sit around and we figure it out together, like a math problem. <laughs> what um, <laughs> what is your current uh, quote unquote strategy for TikTok and Instagram posting? What are you doing? Well, I mean, <laughs> if you, if you want to break it down like that, I guess we've learned that posting to our feed isn't like super important um on instagram uh it's definitely more important to keep our story rolling and for sure there's nothing going on there right now i have to my my drummer and i aaron we we take care of everything but like i said dude it was nuts when you hit us up for this podcast and it was just like all these things start happening like oh my god you know you think there's five of you you think you could handle it and it's just like still you're just like oh god but um but yeah we keeping your story rolling is for sure a a play um interacting with the fans that's another thing like you, you, people if people message you message them back uh if people comment on your post comment back uh just trying to be as personal personable as we can is is definitely a a, a play and with tiktok i think that the real issue with that is just the consistency yeah. Um, I think it's a platform that requires the most consistency of any social media platform we've seen so far, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and it's it's for sure you got to find like uh, you got to roll with the trends. You know, you see a trend, you got to do that trend. You got to try to make your own trend. Uh, but otherwise, that's that's our whole vibe with it i don't know if that's right or not i'm not a, I'm a social media expert but, but that's what we've been doing yeah i'm no expert on it either what i've heard at least is like i've heard a couple things one the more you post the more likely you are to hit bigger numbers mm -hmm. uh and then the other thing i heard was like i think 25 percent of your content should be trend based but then the mm. other 75% can be whatever the hell you want. So like for a band like you guys just record a full show and then just mm. cut <laughs> however many up, clips you up, could possibly get out of it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so consider that when you sit around the table next yeah, time. <laughs> we will, we will. I'll bring it, I'll bring it to the board of trustees. <laughs> Bryce from expedition to try you told me to do this. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> so the interesting thing you brought up was the kind of, idea of reaching out to people kind of on a whim like you mm -hmm. did with joey and then mm -hmm. aj so do you think being able to do that the first two times has motivated you to do it more because like what you never know what could happen because a lot of yeah. people are afraid to reach no. out to people. yeah that's yeah. one thing i'll say like don't be scared don't ever be at least not in this world not in the pop punk world i can tell you i don't we haven't come across one like not one weird conversation with any of these guys really it's crazy you know it was we worked with um nick from hit the lights mm -hmm. and he it, like that was one of the easiest features it what dude what a cool dude for for real it, like so personable it's so nuts you know you look at these guys and they're on stage you're in this you're in a crowd of people you, you're hanging out and you're at a show and you see these people and they're up there and they look like gods right <laughs> yeah. that's what it is like the lights and the sound and it and then you talk to them and they're people they're yeah. just people we're all just people yeah. right it's a, so if i had to give any advice don't ever be scared like dm dudes just do it. I don't know. Maybe they won't answer you, but it's probably not because they're being a dick. You know, it's probably because they just didn't see it. Or they're super busy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's you know? a quote. What, the only podcast I listen to is the Tim Ferriss show. And something he always says is like, don't mistake maliciousness for busyness. Like they're probably not being rude when they don't answer or say something you think is rude, they're probably just busy and like, they don't yeah. have the time. So I think yeah. what, what do you think are, has there ever been a time when you reached out to someone and they didn't respond or were rude in response? Think, um, you don't have to name drop or anything, but we, we had a few experiences like that. Maybe no response. Uh, 
most of the time though, these people get back to you for sure. Like they'll, if we, if we don't get a response back, we're not offended, you know, right. especially with like some of the people we've reached out to for, for real. Like we know no bounds at this yeah. point. We'll just, we just go for it. Yeah. But, um, we definitely not offended. You could tell that these people, you know, also depending on how big of an artist you're talking about, they may not even be in control of their social media, social media handle. They, yeah. they probably, you know, like if you, like, I don't know if Travis Barker is going to get back to you if you, <laughs> if you DM him, you know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe he will. I don't, I don't know. We never tried that one, but, <laughs> but I mean, realistically there must come a point where you can't do it yourself. Mm-hmm. You, right. If you have millions of followers and you're that big, you're that famous, you, you definitely need a team of people. This is right. social media is a job, man. Yeah. <laughs> That's right? why people literally hire social media managers for that reason. Yeah. It gets crazy. That's why it's cool to be in that smaller range of followers because you can mm-hmm. interact with everybody Yeah, and you can grow that tight knit community who will hopefully use word of mouth to spread the word. Dude, we've seen it, man. We've yeah. had followers that have showed up to shows it's like crazy. We're like, what? This I think we had like a we played an acoustic gig um in South Jersey and it wasn't at a venue. It was like a makeshift venue. Uh you know, like a it was like a backyard like bar type of I don't know. Whoever built this is awesome, but <laughs> we played there with uh with AJ from the Dangerous Summer uh-huh. and uh we had like a, a group of people come up to us and that drove up from South Carolina. Oh my God. And we're like, what? Like you drove here from South Carolina to this, <laughs> like backyard spot. That's like you, to see North vet. Like that, that's cool. When we were at the, when we just went to the Gramercy for this wildlife, a fan yelled out, Oh, oh my God. Is that North Vale? What? Hi, then you talk to them because, like, thanks for making me look cool as fuck right now. Like, you know, <laughs> big time appreciate you. <laughs> but it's, uh, for sure. I think that, like, you're crazy not to interact with, with your fan base. If you have a fan base, you just talk to them all the time. Why not? Yeah. They're not, most of them, most of these people, I don't think we've ever met anyone that was bad. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, and something I think about a lot as of more recently, um, I feel like some people who follow band accounts or podcast accounts, whatever it might be, they don't realize how big of an impact they have by doing like small things, whether that be liking posts, sharing yeah. posts, whatever it might be. So what are some uh, seemingly small things that your fans have done that make you feel incredible? <laughs> Like really, I, the biggest one for me is when somebody messages us like back to our story, like our Instagram story. Mm. Like if we put an Instagram story up and someone, you know, how you can message them or like react to the story. Yeah, that's cool. That's nuts to like be at practice and like put some stupid shit up, like singing, and then like you know we'll get a message like fire, you know, like <laughs> so awesome guys, can't wait to see you at. Uh, the House of Independence, and was like, "What? Cool. Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> saying you care. Like, thank you for reminding me why I am in Mike's basement on Monday night. You know, like singing with a bunch of dudes. Like, you know, <laughs> it's crazy. Um. So, what are some short-term and long-term goals for Northvale? What features would you like to?" do or like what are just any goals of any sort for you guys well i mean uh short term we really have to get this record finished this album that we've been working we've been working on this thing for like a year and a half now and it's like really starting to get to us but we 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 hit a few bumps in the road um you know just with like engineering and things like that um so it's been like a long process it, it's kind of it's really dragging on us right now you know like it, it sucks to say that but because we love the songs it's just that at this point we're getting a little uh you know a little crazy with it um so we really need to get this record out and we will you know we're on track um but 
I guess we're already thinking about the next album. You know what I mean? Like we already, it's, you have to plan in advance like that. Like we're going to start, we're probably going to start hitting up people to mix the next record now. Um, or planning for it at least. Um, also we're going to put, it took, it was a lot of up in the air about what our next single was going to be, but we have an acoustic song that we wrote with a girl named Jenna Bruno. Um, she's the lead singer of the ones you forgot. They're, a they're like a, like a really big New Jersey band. You know what I mean? Like they're, they, they like ride Jersey to the core, you know, like that uh, we, we appreciate that. So <laughs> Jenna's like an incredible singer, like sick voice, dude. And we were fortunate enough to um, have her at the studio we record at in upstate New York for a couple days. She stayed with us and we just wrote this jam and it's so dope. And I'm actually super excited that it's a single because it's like a little bit of a like vibe change for us, you know, like a lot of the stuff we put out, it's a lot of like you know, upbeat, up, go, 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 go. And with this, it's a nice and mellow. I think it's dope. It's going to yeah. be cool. Awesome. So, but like, I guess long-term, man, I don't know. Long-term, I we got to get on a tour. Yeah. You know, I want to get on a tour. I want a tour. That's that's the big goal for us right now. Yeah, can you, Uh, well, I'll go anywhere that you're going on tour, but I'm in Rochester, New York. So oh, I, dude, you're not far. No, not at all. So I'm, my one of my friends actually lives in New Jersey. So I got to either come down there, you guys come to Syracuse or Rochester. Yeah. I'll go anywhere, dude. <laughs> That's true, I would love where to see in, you. Uh, where in Jersey does your friend live? He's Oakland. Oh, uh, That's not far from us. I mean, I don't know. Tell him we're playing. We're opening for the Dangerous Summer at the House of Independence on March 18th. Let me know, man. I'll send you tickets. I might have to come down. Yeah, my – uh. I got a couple of friends. Wow, Jesus Christ. Now I'm planning a trip to Jersey. Oh, boy. Dude, come, <laughs> come down. I got you. Just tell I'll, me. Just, I'll, just I'll, message us and let us know. I'll hit you up. Thanks, dude. Um, sure. <laughs> oh, man. Completely blew me off track of my questions. Uh, <laughs> what, what are some things you guys have learned in producing this current album that will be like, like easy peasy when you start recording your next one? Um. You know, we were fortunate enough to work with Ace Enders from the early November um, and Nick Brzezzi from Man Overboard on a bunch of these songs on this record. Um, good Intentions was one of them. We did Good Intentions with uh, Oliver Baxter from Broadside. And Ace w play played a huge part in producing that, uh, that record. So I think, like, in terms of songwriting, we learned a ton. Uh, we production wise i think we've we've really we we have our opinions right but um we really are in the hands of of the producer that we that we choose i think that that's like a big part of this sometimes they know best you know it's not always easy to put six brains in a room and agree right but you have to trust the people you hire, right? The people you put, this is our, this is our art, right? We work really hard on this shit. And, uh, sometimes you got to just like, let people take the reins on it. Even if it's not something, even if it's not exactly what you envisioned, it's probably going to be better because people can take, people can put their own spins on things, you know? And like, I'm super stoked with all of the production that we have on this. So if we've learned anything, I think it was definitely at Ace's studio just to put trust into people and um and songwriting, man. Like the the guy's a genius lyrically. He uh he taught me a lot. So, so do you all have full time jobs or jobs outside of the Oh hell yeah, man. We're well, out here grinding. How do you all balance working and then outside life and then also Northvale what's what's the balance routine look like uh it's tough man um but it's almost like how bad do you want it right like how bad do you want to do this that's why I said before it's like playing a show is like a real nice reminder of like why exactly I'm here on Monday night after work mm -hmm. uh it, we 
you you have to just keep trying. You know, you can't get frustrated. Uh, when we got to do something, we have to do it around the schedule of five different people. So we really have to just work with each other. Uh, we have to take each other's lives into consideration too. Like you have to be super mature about it. You know, like you can't get pissed because one person can't come to the music video shoot on this day. Like you can't get mad. I, uh, our, um, our drummer, he had a death in the family. The art for our last show, he had to go, he had to fly he had to get on a plane and go to Florida. We had to get, we had to play with a different drummer. You just do it, you know, you do what you have to do. My rhythm guitarist, Chris, his days off are um, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. That's his Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. That's insane for us. But you do, you know, you, you just deal with it. Like I will go to, he lives in South Jersey in Belmar. I will go to Belmar on Sunday and crash there and get up early and drive to work in the morning because you just have to get shit done. I write with Chris are a lot. He's Chris is like, he write he writes the music to this. <laughs> he is responsible for for the music to to this project. He's he killed it like he's the core here. So like if his so if his days off are uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, then I just don't sleep that during that time. <laughs> it is what it is. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's tough. You but you got to do it. You got to life throws shit at you. You know, like you can't. You can't get caught up. Like you can do anything you want to do. You know, I don't like I'm busy. I'm tired. It's just bullshit excuses. Make time. Just make time. And so I don't I don't think that it's ever been so like the burden of having a job is, has been so bad that we can't do Northvale. Like that's crazy. <laughs> so in terms of trying to make the most of your time, what for bands just starting out or musicians just starting out, what are some resources that you guys have used that you feel are not necessary? Um, in this band, I don't know if we've made any any mistakes on things well, like perfect. that yet. That's perfect. That's I mean, <laughs> I mean, I don't not. To, I mean, I don't think so. Not yet. You know what? We've all fortunately been in a lot of bands and projects before this and i think we really got a lot of our mistakes out mm. you know uh i can tell you that in my old band we played out too much you, you can't you can't just keep playing the same venues around your area and inviting all of your friends to come out or you know breaking all your friends balls to come out right because yeah. By the fifth time they've seen you in a month, they're kind of like, dude, I don't, I get it. Like, I, I don't want to see you again. You know, like you can't do things like that. Um, you have to pick and choose, you know, what you want to do. Uh, I think um, also like harping on, on a song for too long is like just a dangerous uh, situation, right? Like you write a song, you I mean, at least with us anyway, we, we write things, our, our pre-pro demos are extensive, you know, like we write it, we write it again, we write it again, we write it again by like the sixth pass of the lyrics. It's almost like, okay, like we got to stop now, you know, like what is the best, like pick the best. This is the, we can't, cause you could probably sit on a song for like 10 years if you really wanted to and make it the best song ever. But like, is that really going to be? a good plan for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you could go back in time to when you were first starting out in music, what do you think you would tell yourself? <laughs> to stop giving a shit about what <laughs> other people said. That's what, that's what I would tell myself because I think when you're young, you know, you always have uh most of, a lot of a lot of people, at least, I think it, you have like a voice in the back of your head. Like, is, am I making a mistake? Mm -hmm. You know, am I spending too much time on this? Like, should I focus on something different? Mike just walked up the stairs. <laughs> should I, uh, you know, should I maybe walk the more obvious path? Right. 
And like, I would just tell myself like, that's a load of horse shit. Yeah. <laughs> you got to do what you want to do. <laughs> Does Mike have um, any, uh, this is, this, there... is, this is Mike. Mike, you got any advice for new musicians? Advice for new musicians? Yeah, sure. <laughs> That's a, that's a loaded question. <laughs> what what would you tell yourself if you could go back in time to when you first started playing music? What would you tell yourself? Um, you got to like give more of a shit. You can't like it's, oh boy. It, you can't you can't like half ass this stuff. You know? Okay, you can't. Like, you gotta you gotta like, actually like take it like a, another job and treat it like you know with some sense of professionalism. You gotta jump. Just That's what you gotta do. <laughs> so I'm jumping here, Kev. Take this. Say hi. All right. Oh, we got the whole band coming. Awesome. Kevin says, <laughs> Kevin says hi. Chris says hi. I hear Aaron playing drums, so it doesn't sound like he's. All that. <laughs> uh, we're almost all wrapped up, anyways. So, uh, what is on the horizon for you guys? What can people be on the lookout? Um, I mean, this show for sure, uh, Asbury Park, the House of Independence, we're opening for the Dangerous Summer. We're excited about that. It's going to be cool to see AJ again. Um, we, you know, keep a lookout for our new music. We are going to have this next single come out, I think, in a couple weeks. We're probably going to see us starting to promote it soon. Uh, that's with Jenna Bruno from The Ones You Forgot. Um, and really just keep an eye out for all the new, the new music coming out and I don't know. Listen, if you like it, help us out, you know, check us out on social media. We're here. So what's, um, what's a band or solo artist that you feel like should have way more recognition than they do? A band or a solo artist. I'll tell you, we played a little acoustic thing at a tiny little art gallery, um, in, north bergen i think it was in union city thank you kev and uh (laughs) the dude's name is hadley he's a singer songwriter and he is fucking cool he's awesome (laughs) his music is badass and he deserves a lot more recognition than he has so if you i think his instagram handle is at mf hadley you should look him up and listen to his shit because he's good awesome so where where can the listeners find you guys on all social media platforms? Um, at Northvale Band, everywhere. All right, perfect. Uh, any last pieces of advice or anything else you would like to mention before we close out this episode? No, nah, man. Just you know, if you like music, support it. That's <laughs> it. Keep streaming. Let us know. Contact us. Tell us what you think, good or bad. We love it. <laughs> awesome. Well. Keith, thank you so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. For sure, man. I'm so hyped to have finally gotten this worked out. We, yeah, we right. postponed it a couple that. times, but we finally did it. So hyped to meet meet you and Mike now. So that's very cool. That's right. <laughs> for sure, dude. <laughs> for all those listening, uh, links to everything we talked about will be in the show notes. I'll link stuff down below so you can check out Northvale all over the place, Spotify, Apple. You can find them on Instagram. I'll put it all down there. I'll do my best. (laughs) I am one man, just like Northvale is just one band trying to handle social media. I'll try my best. (laughs) But for all you listening, thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate it. Peace out and good luck, everybody.